Google Sites, pros and cons, let's get to it. What's up everybody, my name is David, website creditpro.com. So I have on this channel a Google Sites tutorial that's doing really well now. I mean, the, the YouTube gods have <laughs> finally decided to give that video some attention. And so I thought I would create a quick little follow-up video on the pros and cons of using Google Sites based on my experience of actually having a Google Site for the last 30 days. Now, my Google Site is actually edgeofdavid.com, which used to be my really bad, cringy WordPress blog. I started back in 2010, a long time ago. And like all things, that project just ran its course and it's time to just retire it and move on to uh, better things. But I decided to like, okay, let me try out Google Sites and see what this is all about. And you know, I really like Google Sites, but there's a lot of things I don't like about it. So let's get to it. Okay, so here are some pros of Google Sites. So Google Sites for starters is very beautiful and it works well on any mobile device. Now I actually got messages on my Facebook page asking me what, what theme am I using for my edgeofdavid.com website and I was really surprised by that because it's like, are you serious? Like <laughs> I'm not even using WordPress, I'm using Google Sites. So I have to give props to a free website builder that does a great job of making a uh, very beautiful site, e very easy to customize and it just looks great on any mobile device, it's very responsive uh, and so that's really a big pro. Now yes, I think Google Sites do look a little bit cookie cutter a little bit there are there are current current aspects of the site where it's like after you've had a google site you can be like oh that's a google site for sure but in general people aren't that familiar with it so i think that cookie cutter nature of like the template style uh, is not that big of a deal because you still have a wide range of flexibility where you can create an impressive looking uh, website overall and like for me personally like i think like edgeofdavid.com came out really well i think it looks really nice and like people think it looks so nice that they're like asking me like what theme am I using to power that website and they are not even aware that I'm not using WordPress, that it's just a free website builder from Google called Google Sites. So that's the first pro. The sites look excellent on mobile devices, desktops, etc. The next pro is that these Google Sites are perfect, I would say, for any About Me style website. So they're perfect for any like five to 10 page website. And so you kind of know what I'm talking about. If you just want to start some small website on a specific topic, your intention is just like, hey, I just need a website so I can link to it from like my Facebook page, Instagram, Pinterest, YouTube channel, whatever, and I don't need it to be this complex thing, then Google Sites is perfect for you, especially if you want to create a lovely looking about me website. I think Google Sites is the best option for that instead of uh, going with a web host and going with WordPress, et cetera. If you just need like some simple five page website, I would say go with Google Sites because like you just need something out there in the world that people can find, maybe uh, subscribe to or just read a little and learn more about you. Like if you want to link, say like a website in your YouTube description. Uh, so that's why I think the second pro of uh, Google Sites is, is that it's just good for very, very small niche websites that are not aimed at making money or uh, getting traffic or anything. It's just really just an about me website, just a small five, 10 page website. Google Sites is perfect for that. And the last pro is that you can set up a, a custom domain name. And so that's great because you can just get away from that Google sites, sites.google slash your website. You can actually have a custom domain name like edgeofdavid.com, for example, or yourwebsite.com that people can actually visit your website. And then it's HTTPS, which I love. I don't have to deal with any type of SSL certificate. I don't have to enable anything. Just right out of the gate, after you set up your site, you set up your custom domain name, Everything works right out of the box and you don't have to worry about anything. And the only reason I bring that up is because, like, for example, Hostinger.com is a very budget web host and they're very good. But one thing they don't provide is that they don't manage the SSL certificate for you on the back end. That's actually a little small service that they upsell you on. And so, like, you can get a, a web hosting for very, very cheap, but it's going to be HTTP. You're like, your website's not going to be secure. You have to pay for the SSL certificate management. And what do I mean by that? Well, SSL certificates require renewal every three months and it's a pain in the butt. So you can do it yourself or your web host can do it for you. Now with most web hosts like SiteGround and Bluehost that are a little bit more expensive, they'll just take care of the SSL certificate for you without you having to worry about it. And so that's why I really like Google Sites because there are a lot of web hosts out there who, and, and also just free website builders, for example, where they, like you can build a website, but then it's not HTTPS. And for me, that's a deal breaker because if you ever want to put like a convert kit or MailChimp form or even just a contact form on your website, it's really bad to have people be submitting information through a form on your website that is unsecure. 
because what HTTPS does is it encrypts your website, encrypts, encrypts any information that's flowing through your website that users put in. And so that's why, uh, for me, it's a deal breaker, deal breaker. And also it's just like user experience. When, when you come visit a site that says not secure, like people don't trust a website like that. It's a very small detail, but people just are so accustomed to seeing that little lock in the corner of a web browser that when they don't see it, they're like, what is that? It's just a little hygiene thing where it's just something's a little bit off with the website. So for me, that's something I really like about Google Sites is that it's HTTPS. You can set up a custom domain name and all works right out of the box quickly and easily. Okay, so now for some cons with Google Sites and there are quite a few, so let's get to it. So the first con is that you can't have naked domain names with your Google Site. And if you're like, you have no idea what I'm talking about, get your head out of the gutter. I'm not talking about anything like, like that. A naked domain name is basically website.com or HTTPS website.com. That's a naked domain name. Naked because it doesn't have the www in front, okay? And so you can't have your website be w, you can't have your website be HTTPS uh, websitecreatorpro.com. It has to be HTTPS www.websitecreatorpro.com. And now for most people, that's not a big issue, particularly if you're just creating an about me website. For me personally, it's like, I don't care, whatever, www, not no, non www, who cares? But again, it's just a small thing to be aware of that you can't actually have naked domain names uh, with Google Sites. The next con is that Google Sites doesn't do redirections properly. And so what I mean is that like, if someone is trying to visit the naked domain name of your website, they're going to hit a 404 page. It's gonna hit a not found page. Uh, because it just because the redirection doesn't work. And that's a huge con because if someone's trying to visit your website and they type in like websitecreatorpro.com and then it redirects it and then they go to HTTPS websitecreatorpro.com, if it's a Google site, they, it will just come up and say like can't find the site, it's not, not loading correctly, etc. cetera. Uh, so that's a huge issue for me because you, what you want is that you want your, just, you want your website to redirect pro properly. So if someone tries to visit you know, HTTPS, uh, websitecreatorpro.com, it should just automatically redirect them to the www.version or whatever the primary version of your site is. So like if the primary version of your site is the naked domain name, which it usually is if you have a WordPress powered website, like so when someone type, tries to type in www.yourwebsite.com, they automatically get sent to HTTPS, yourwebsite.com. That's the way you want it to work, but with Google Sites, it doesn't work like that. So again, it's a small con because again, Google Sites is ideal just for a personal website, uh, but again, just something to be aware of. Another con is that the Google Sites version of your website is also available in addition to the custom domain name version. So you basically have duplicate content. You have two websites. You have your uh, uh, sites.google, I think it is, slash your website name, and then you also have your custom domain name that you set up so people can visit both and it's duplicate content. So again, that's why I say like Google Sites is ideal for like an about me website where you're not trying to like make money or drive traffic, etc. And so that's just something to be aware of that I thought I, I didn't like personally. It's like, no, I don't want people to be able to visit like Google <laughs> sites that Google Edge of David and then they come to they find the content that's on edgeofdavid.com. Basically, I don't want to have like duplicate content out there in the world. But again, it's a free platform. So that's just a big con to be aware of. Another con is that you don't have any specific control over your page titles. What I mean by that is like, yeah, you can adjust the page title, but the way the page title actually appears in the search engine is different because it bases it on what the menu option is, if that makes sense. And so like when you add a page to your menu, say like I have a page on my site and I talk about like the Sony X3000 camera as a vlogging camera, for example. And so the page title is like the X3000 is the vlogging camera of the gods. And then it's like the menu item in, in, on my site is camera. But if you, do a, if you do a search for like the Edge of David, X3000 camera, et cetera, it just comes up as camera. <laughs> it's like, no, <laughs> it's like, that's not the page title. That's the menu title. And so that's why I don't like, because you, you can't change that. There's no way there's no, you don't have that control over the meta description like you do with WordPress, where you can just jump into like Yoast SEO or rank math or whatever. And then you have that specific control where you can change the way the page title looks for search engines and the meta description, all that stuff. You don't have any control over that stuff with Google Sites, okay? So again, that's why I said a bazillion times. It's just for an about me website, small website, five, 10 pages that you're not trying to make money from because you just don't have any control like over the meta description, page titles, et cetera. You can just design a nice looking website that's not <laughs> really optimized at all for SEO. So the next con is that you have to have a home link on your website. And I find that really annoying because most people know that they can click the logo to navigate back to the homepage. 
With Google Sites, the way it's structured is that you have to basically set a home page. Whatever you set as the home page is going to be in the menu bar. So like you have your home page, and that's the you have your page, you have one page that's set as the home page, and then you have your other additional pages. No problem. And they all add, gets added to the menu. So you'll have something like home, and then like about me, contact, etc. And so you can change the home link. You don't have to, it doesn't have to say home. You can change it to like subscribe or whatever you want to do. And maybe make the homepage like a page where people can just subscribe to an email opt-in form, something like that. But the issue is that whatever you have as the homepage is going to exist. And also the uh, homepage is going to um, like, you're going to have like duplicate content. So <laughs> what I mean is like, if say you set your homepage and it's called home, you're going to have your website.com slash home and your website.com is going to be two pages that are literally the same thing. And you're going to have duplicate content and there's nothing you can do about it. You can't get rid of the home link. You have to have a home link because that's what happens when you set a homepage with Google sites, which I hate because <laughs> it's like, like I already, I already have like two pages uh, that are exactly the same because the Google Sites version is available and then the custom main name version is available. And now I have to have two duplicate pages on my website. I have to have the home page, which can be found at yourwebsite.com and also yourwebsite.com slash home. It's maddening. I don't know why they have it set up like that, but that's what you have to deal with. And the last con is that you can't really monetize Google Sites in any ways. You're not allowed, for example, like with blogger.com, you're able to basically set, up it, set it up with AdSense and monetize it that way. Google Sites, you're not allowed to put AdSense or anything on it. And so it's just a free platform. So you, it's not there's no real monetization options available. So again, like a, not a big deal if you're using Google Sites as intended, but just something to be aware of. All right, guys, that is it for this video. If you enjoyed it, consider subscribing. Uh, hit that like button. I'll see you next video. Bye-bye.